Hello, for our student senate meeting general assembly on Thursday, January 25th at 4:34 p.m. On meeting's order, we will now do the roll call. From the Executive Council, President July Michelle. Present. Thank you. Vice President of Administration Finance, Kai Rio. Present. Vice President of Legislative Affairs, Maggie Ju. Present. Thank you. Vice President of Team Development, Annette Crowder. Present. Thank you. Vice President of Public Relations is vacant. Advisor Green. Here. Thank you. Senator Angel Adia. Present. Thank you. Senator Sierra Brunner. They're not here. They're not here. Oh, well, not here. Okay, well, Senator Team Clearwater. Present. Thank you. Senator Cody Kessel. Present. Thank you. Senator Michael Malone. Present. Thank you. Senator Danny Hur. Present. Thank you. Senator Cameron Wilkin. I am present. Thank you. Senator Katrina Willis. Present. Thank you. Senator Stacey Brother is also absent. Thank you. Meeting called to order at 4 34 p.m. And we do the form. Thank you. Uh, and today, a motion to approve previous meeting minutes. I have. Rachel. Okay, any second? Uh, there. Any discussion? Everybody who's in favor of approving the previous meeting minute, raise your hand. That is majority. Okay, thank you. Anything in a motion to approve the meeting agenda? So moved. Is there a second? Second by Senator Malone. Any discussion? Yes, I would like to make a friendly amendment to the um, agenda to in, um, nominations for uh, Kennedy Washington. As a senator, Rishi, she's going to be joining us in a little bit. She's dealing with something at Student Success Center. Does she have the uh, requirement? Like, how many? This will be her third meeting. Oh, she was, attended a meeting before um, the semester ended, and then she attended the last. So I'll go ahead and second that motion. Uh, it, although the person who made the main motion, which would be Cody, yeah, who made the motion to the um, accept the agenda. Um, you can now accept that for free if you want. Accepted. Okay. So now, now the motion is to accept the meeting agenda with the amendment that we had Kennedy Washington um, nomination to add Kennedy Washington to the point. Agenda. Point of order, actually. When are we adding that to the layout? Uh, adding, adding, to adding to new business. Thank you. Is that okay? And, uh, agenda. With five minutes. Five minutes Part with a minutes. new business. Um, oh, I will accept that at five minutes in the business. So do I accept it? So that's the main motion on this meeting right now. You, we want it to be item C or? It would um, be item C. Item C, yes. Okay. Everybody who's in favor of approving the meeting agenda with the friendly amendment with the added nomination for a new senator, raise your hand. Does appear to be majority. Yeah, thank you. I've now added a okay, public comment. We have Ali Zarin. Nam, VP of Institutional Effectiveness. So our first guest, Ali. Good afternoon, or I should say good evening now because it's getting dark so early to everybody. We're happy to be here. I'm joined by my colleague Zong Her, and we're going to quickly uh, introduce the yeah. concept of institutional effectiveness at uh, Madison College to you and tell you what we do. But we're especially here to talk about a student college-wide student survey uh, of engagement coming up in about a month from now. So um, 
Song and I will talk about that and ask for your support uh, with our students to encourage them to participate in, in this survey. But well, we'll get to that in just a minute. If I'm allowed, I would like to share my screen and uh, quickly go through a slide deck if that's OK. Yeah. 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 Thank you. And please let me know if you see my screen. I do see it. We see your screen. Perfect. Perfect. So yeah, institutional, uh, if I'm going to, uh, can you see my screen yeah. in presentation mode? Yes, we yeah. do. Perfect. All right. So let's talk about uh, institutional effectiveness. And I just lost my screen. There we go. What is, what is institutional effectiveness? So with every organization, there is a unit at the at the organization that does an assessment of quality of things that we do at an at our institution. Our goal with institutional effectiveness is to engage an assessment, a, a systematic assessment, ongoing assessment year round, making sure that Madison College, with our goals and our mission and our vision, we are we're striving through that and we're achieving those goals on a daily basis or monthly basis or annual basis. So what does that involve? One of the things we do, main function that we do, we do decision support for strategic use of data. So every decision that gets made at the college, if decision is not backed by data, things that are actually contributing to that decision, that decision is probably not a good decision, if you agree. So we're, our, our unit is responsible for providing data to all uh, levels of the college, from the executive team of the college to all the way to faculty members of the college and staff at the college, to make sure that we're, if they are involved in a decision-making process, we have the relevant data to make sure that we supporting that decision. There's a data governance structure that Zong Her, my colleague Zong Her here, um, She's, she chairs and basically that talks about all the college rush initiatives and all the compliances and making sure that that what we're providing the college all has a basis in the structure and it's is moving in the right direction. We do a lot of assessment, a lot of planning at the college. Uh, our unit is also responsible for uh, criterions of accreditation. Um, our, our college is accredited through the Higher Learning Commission. I'm going to talk about that in just a little bit. Uh, a couple of things that we that we do at IE is we are the stewards of public records. Uh, our institution is a is a public institution, so everything that we do at the college uh, are public. Our taxpayers, our our communities, have a uh, right to see. So we are the ones that that facilitate that information going out to the public and also the appellate office. So every um, we have a, a, a sort of a compliance and a review process for all the complaints that come through the college, whether it's a student complaint or, or an employee complaint. There's a group of folks that that review those complaints and make decisioning. Uh, we are in charge of making sure that is a fair process and uh, review the appeals to those to those decisions to make sure that everybody everything is basically up in order. For those of you, and I think the last time I was with your wonderful group, I, we talked about achieving the dream. Uh, I'm going to talk about it a little bit more. Uh, achieving the dream is a is a uh, initiative, a huge college wide initiative uh, around the college to concentrate on increasing success of black and brown male students at the college. So uh, we um, facilitated that throughout the whole college as well. One of the units that, that Zong, her, my colleague Zong leads at the college, it's uh, Institutional Research and Data Management unit of the college. Basic functions of data management, they are the stewards of data. Uh, that whole decision support that I talked about to administration, to faculty, to staff, with analysis, analytics, and research, uh, this group uh, does a vast majority of that decision support for the college. Um, college is in, in the midst of writing their, our strategic plan. Uh, we call it the Vision 30 or V30 plan. Uh, institutional research is uh, 
the main group responsible for making sure our key performance indicators are set and that we're, they're asse we're assessing those key performance indicators for the college to be able to make sure that we're, we're on the right path. Um, they do a lot of report creation. They provide a lot of training support to faculty, staff, administration. Um, that we do a lot of small, medium, and large size surveys at the college. Uh, again, we're a public institution, so we have um, the obligation to report uh, the health of the college to um, different federal and state um, entities. So uh, our IRDM folks uh, do all of that um, state and federal reporting. They maintain our data warehouse, basically the heartline of where our data sits at the college and has maintained at the college, making sure that the quality of data is good, uh, that we are protecting the, the privacy of the data, especially our student data. Um, and then one of the things that they also do, they do primary research and analysis for the college. And that's where that whole SESI survey comes up the, uh, that we're going to talk about in just a little bit. Um, institutional effectiveness also does our internal uh, planning processes. Uh, we do an assessment of um, goals um, that units set on an annual basis. Uh, they set a three year plan for the goals for every unit. Uh, we have about 170 units around the college uh, and each one of these uh, units sets a three year plan and every year they go in and they assess those plans. Um, making sure that they're still uh, on par and on, on our, our, their goals are within reach, um, making sure that equity and inclusion lens is provided through all those goals and explaining how those goals will be measured and assessed on an annual basis. Um, <clears throat> and they're aligned with our college's strategic plans and supervisor goals. Uh, we talked about accreditation. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we are accredited uh, through the Higher Learning Commission. Um, just a little bit about Higher Learning Commission. They accredit colleges and universities in 19 states around the United States. Um, there's, there's three pathways that you can get accredited through HLC. Uh, Madison College is in the open pathway, which is a 10 year cycle. Uh, that yeah. we, they do a review of our college in year four and then year 10 with the quality um, initiative, which is sort of an ongoing uh, continuous improvement project that we do from year five to seven of that 10 year pathway. Um, our quality initiative follows our um, achieving the dream priorities that we talked about earlier in this presentation. Um, our main goal for uh, our achieving the dream priorities is increasing uh, success for black and brown male students. Uh, to begin this journey, uh, this past fall semester, we identified uh, sections in math and English uh, with embedded tutors, introduced embedded tutors to those classrooms. And our goal is to follow the follow students and making sure that overall impact of these initiatives make a difference on the success of, of our students, um, making sure that they persist and we retain those students. Uh, and we're concentrating on black and brown male students for now, but really is the success of all students of color. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, there's systematized uh, training for faculty and staff on student success and uh, uh, access, and making sure that faculty have communities of practice established for them to look at data, their data and their uh, fellow faculty data on an ongoing basis to making sure that they're leading and implementing uh, you know, processes that lead to increase of black and brown male students in their classrooms. So it's really a classroom intervention with support services outside of it. How do we work together? Uh, so on her, my colleague always says is it, it, it takes a village um, for student success and uh, making sure that this is all um, working and clicking to make sure that we receive uh, the outcomes that we're that we're looking for. Um, with that, I'm going to quit sharing my screen and I'm going to hand it over to my colleague Zong Her for the SESI presentation. But before that, are there any questions about the functions of institutional effectiveness? I have a question. 
Yeah. Uh, two questions. One, if you go back to the Achieving a Dream initiative, so actually I'm part of like that community and I've seen the statistics, but I feel like when you have that message and you don't present the statistics along with it, people go, why are you focusing on particularly one group of people? Because like, what? why don't you want women to succeed? Why don't you want people who aren't, you know, like black and brown to succeed? I think if you, I think it'd be more effective to have that message, like me knowing it, being in the community and hearing people present the statistics and seeing like the bar graphs of people not able to succeed the same, you know, have the same outcomes of success that other groups are having. I feel like when you present that to people that don't know, and maybe they're hearing it for the first time, I feel like it'd be really effective because I've heard people say that before, like, why are you not helping others? Why is there such a targeted focus? So I just really feel like when you make that presentation, adding that graph would actually make a big difference. I don't know if other people saw it that way, but I get scared and think that people might look, oh, why are you spending all your time on this one particular group instead of everyone? Well, there's reasons why. When you look at the data, and that's exactly what you do. So I just for that data message. I don't know if someone wants to directly respond right now. No, I'm not directly responding. Okay. The second thing is that um, when it comes to institutional effect, and this is something that I've been interested in, but I know that you mentioned like tutors, um, you know, being focused on in on like, you know, within certain types of communities. And I, one of the barriers that I've noticed is that we have requirements for degrees when in reality, I think what we need to have is like core competency skills. So if mm -hmm. people are able to teach the skill of like math or English or language, then I don't think we necessarily need someone to have a degree as long as they have the skills to be able to help students succeed. And I feel like that's a barrier that we're encountering. We're not hiring people because they don't have a certain degree, but in reality, they're actually helping people. And if you look at those metrics, you can hire them. So I don't know where you're you know, going with those two things. That is an excellent question. May I ask what your name is, sir? <laughs> uh -oh. I just want no. I, I know your first name. If you if you feel I want to address you because that is such a great question. That is such okay. a great Hi, question. Brito. I'm yeah. sorry. Hi, Bruto. Nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you. Uh, so, success of students. Not all students succeed at the same rate. Yeah. We know that students of color because of the systems that are at college, the systems that are put upon students of color or people of color in general in society, they have not statistically performed as well as their white counterparts over the years. This is not a 2023 problem. This is a 1985 problem. This is a 1995 problem. This is a 2020 problem, and it's a 2024 problem. We joined Achieving the Dream because Achieving the Dream is an organization that has been working on this for about 20 years okay. with some success, not overall success. I cannot honestly sit here and say, by the time we are done with the Achieving the Dream initiative, black and brown students or students of color in general, or if you put a gender into it and say black and brown male students or female students are going to increase their success rate by 25% by the end of the year because we just started this. We made a commitment to this, not just because of ATD, this is a long-term commitment of the college to work on this, to close the gaps, to, to chip at that, at the institutional practices and processes that have been in place, some intentionally, some un unintentionally, over the course of history that in education. We have to start somewhere. Um, looking at our black and brown male students for this first cut of the initiative was somewhere that we wanted to start. And the reason we, we our president, wanted to to focus on black and brown male students is because, yes, you're right. Black females, Hmong females, Hmong males are not performing as well as their white counterparts either. But we have to start somewhere. So I let's, agree with all that. I just want to say, yeah, right. I agree with all that. I understand that we support the same thing. I just think it would help the message if you put some statistics and some bar graphs on there. That's all I'm saying. For yeah. sure. And I'll be happy to supply that. I, I, I believe me when I tell you. We have looked at this data quantitatively and quantitatively a hundred thousand times over, um, and we're we're aware of the problem. 
But I want to tell you one secret. I don't think we need more data to tell us that our students of color are not performing as well as their white counterparts. This is again, this has been a lifelong problem and is deep rooted in education and outside of education in the private industry as well. Uh, our staff of color leave at a higher rate. Our staff of color don't get paid as well. Our staff of mm -hmm. color don't get the, the top jobs either. Mm -hmm. This is this is so we're starting here, but this is a right. this is a long term commitment of the college to work on this. I don't know if that answers your question. No, thank you. Thank you. OK, uh, so I will see and then after that, we'll part. Yeah, um, <laughs> sure. so um, I'm going to, uh, I guess, commend Kai because, yes, very much in agreement. Um, additionally, um, I hope that in this working here, we take into account things um, with systematic inequalities such as uh, choice because of, of what you recognize, because I heard some troubling things, honestly, with some of the language used. Um, when it, especially we're talking about um, things like math and English, um, and in specific um, English, because we have been working with some of the, some of the groups here at the school, um, namely the Diversity and Community Relations Council, when it comes to things like the acceptance of AABE into classrooms, because students might understand the core principles, but they are being discounted because of the way they choose to communicate, mm -hmm. whether or not this is the way that is just most fluent for them, or this is actually what they're choosing to do actively as a individual, but mm -hmm. it's not being considered uh, academically sufficient. So I really hope that that's taken into consideration, and I hope that you can update your um, presentation with that in mind as well. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate that. Great feedback. Uh, maybe Crowden. Um, thank you so much for the presentation so far. I guess my question just is, um, can you give me some examples of what courses has the embedded tutors in there? So we started, uh, oh, I'm sorry, were you done with your question? I don't want to jump in. No, no, you're fine. Go ahead. Um, so we started again this we just started this 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 past fall and we wanted to start on a small scale. So uh, the reason we chose math and English classes is because of their we call gateway courses. So English one, um, elementary algebra um, and intermediate algebra are classes that uh, a lot of our students have to take before they, they proceed in their educational career. So we started with those classes um, on the math and the English side. Uh, we actually have two of those classes are what we called ALP and AMP classes. Uh, and I don't know if you're familiar with this, but those are classes that are developmental students and English one class uh, English one students are all in one class. It's sort of a two classes in one. Um, because it's a, and, and students uh, historically prefer those classes because they, they knock out uh, a lot more credits with that one class. Uh, it brings in a lot of the developmental folks in there too. So with having that extra support in the classroom, we're hoping that we're providing that extra support in the classroom to make sure that the students are succeeding in those classrooms. Um, there's embedded tutor classes, however, outside of what we talked about with these five English, uh, five classes for ATD, um, there are, we're uh, piloting those in psychology classes, in AMP classes, uh, in a lot of the other uh, writing classes as well. Uh, and we're tracking the success of those of those classes as well to make sure that we're, uh, before we scale this and expand this, we really wanted to have sort of a controlled environment to be able to look at these um, uh, for this like for the spring semester, we have about 120 students, 121 students that are in these classes, um, studying and really focusing and honing in on these 121 students is a lot easier than if we did. Let's do let's say 2,000 students. So we wanted to really focus on this and study this before we start uh, scaling this starting in the fall of 2024. I hope that answered your question. It does. The reason why I was wondering is because um, I did go first of all, I went through an English alpha class um, my first semester here, and it was definitely a helpful course. And now I'm um, a writing fellow for an English up class. 
Um, and I was just wondering because I know in my um, in my writing fellow class that I have um, probably about five or six black and brown students in there. And so and they're male. So I was right. just kind of curious because I didn't know if there was somebody else in the class or that was going to be joining the class that I didn't know about. That's all. So and that's a great question. So we're we're tracking the, if you're a writing fellow at all the classes that have writing fellows were were um, specially tracking those uh, that success of those students were really, you know, honing on those. Um, but it's we're not pushing students to these classes. These are regular classes that are offered. Um, we're not saying if you're a black and brown male student, you should go to this class. If you're a oh, white no, student, I, you should go to this class. You know what I'm saying? It's it, yeah, it's I, open I'm, enrollment. I'm so well, we're just picking the classes because honestly, um, faculty that are teaching these five classes that we're talking about, they were the hand raisers. They are committed to this cause and they want to make a effort because there is a lot of extra work for faculty. Uh, we we reach out to them every week. They every week they give us a status report on all the students in the class. How is student A, student B, student C doing? Have they attended? Have they completed their assignment? Have they, uh, you know? So it's a lot a lot of extra work for the faculty too. But there these are the ones that we started the ones that were hand raises and are committed to this work to start this work. Again, we're so, just beginning with this. Thank you. Sorry, of course. Sorry, we we ran out of time. Uh, Motion to extend. Okay. Motion to extend so our second that motion so that we can hear our, the rest of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. It's already finished. I thought Zong. Zong has a separate section. Oh, yeah. okay. My apologies. Yeah, he's, he's done. Okay. okay. Do Thank you, you. want to withdraw that motion or you? Yeah, withdraw. Okay. Thank you. Um, now we're going to go to our next case or the next segment because Ali's still going to be here. <laughs> uh, community College is. Study of Student Engagement, CCSSE. Zong Erm, Manager IRDM, and Ali Zerman, VP Institutional Effectiveness. This is 30 minutes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm uh, really glad to uh, join you all again uh, virtually, but um, you know, I feel like, you know, the Student Senate has um, been one of those entities that has really leveraged a lot of the data that we have, you know, been collecting systemically, you know. So last time when I, you know, provided uh, some feedback on our other study, you know, Student Satisfaction Inventory, I was telling you about this, uh, you know, spring that we were going to be doing the 2024 student, um, you know, survey that's going to be focusing on engagement. So I'm going to go ahead and just share my screen. Hopefully uh, all of you can see it. Okay. Yeah, there we see it. it. Okay, yeah. good. Thank you. So um, again, you know, Ali and I have been um, doing um, more of what we call sort of like road shows, you know, just going out there, reaching out to people, telling everybody about this particular study. And, um, you know, this study is going to be uh, done in February, on February 19th to March 8th, like over a three week time frame. And, you know, this is a study that we have done previously in 2013, but we put that aside and, you know, haven't done it. Um, Again, until, you know, this last year when Dr. Daniel was uh, looking at student engagement and really wanted to have a, a student engagement study at the college. And so, you know, because of that, we uh, put it back, you know, pull it back together and uh, we really wanted to be able to leverage this particular study, um, you know, beyond just, you know, the uh, benchmarks or beyond just, you know, sharing it out to our uh, board and upper management. We wanted to be able to leverage this study uh, holistically throughout our organization. So, you know, that's why we're, you know, talking to many of you here today, um, hoping that you will also help us uh, and partner with us like in previous studies. And so when the data comes back, we hope to be able to share it with you in addition to any of the other stakeholders at the college. Okay, so, you know, um, just a little bit on those student engagement uh, study. It is, it's um, short, people call it SESI, okay. Uh, there is a four-year counterpart, as you know, 
uh, the four-year institutions um, that's called NESI, okay, but ours is for community colleges. It focuses on community colleges, and every year about, you know, 240 to 250 colleges, uh, you know, that are two years nationwide, you know, have their students take the uh, survey. Okay, so it really studies engagement in you know, college interactions. Okay, it's developed by the University of Texas, Austin. Okay, and it measures hopefully meaningful educational activities both inside and outside of the classroom. Uh, it's administered traditionally, has been administered um, you know, through a stratified sampling method. And so we go, you know, we give them their our courses for the spring semester. They pick and choose and things like that. And then they give us like scantrons that we then, you know, give to these particular classes. And so, you know, that's how it was done before pandemic. But then after pandemic, you know, we now have this option of, you know, doing it totally online. OK, so that's what we're uh, trying to do now. Uh, some of you that have been here, you know, in 2022, maybe, you know, aware of the student satisfaction inventory. We're using the same methodology that we did for that. OK, and we're hoping to, you know, every other year, you know, do uh, switch them off. One focusing on, you know, engagement and then, you know, the other one focusing on you know, priority and satisfaction for our students. And so, you know, this particular study is similar and will take about maybe 20 minutes on average. So when we're talking 20 minutes on average, you know, some people may take more, some people may take less to do the a survey and, and such. And so this particular study has about 60 questions plus 15 special questions, okay? And so as a part of this whole process, uh, we hope to be systemically collecting this information from over about 11, uh, you know, thousand of our students this spring that will be invited to participate. So we're looking at 11,000 with, you know, some of it uh, being in our, you know, academic advancement area, which is developmental education that we haven't really surveyed in the past. OK, so what the study will do is it will give us performance, um, benchmark performance against our other peers and the national standard. OK, uh, typically, you know, if there is a lot of you know, students participating, you're looking at, you know, potentially about 180 to you know, 200,000 students, you know, nationally. OK, so that's where those uh, benchmarks come from. Uh, hopefully, it will help us to inform our strategic planning. You know, Ali shared a little bit about, you know, the vision, vision 2030. Hopefully, when we get this back, we can do some analyses and then, you know, use that to help us with uh, our strategic planning. In a, uh, addition here, we will be looking at unit planning, which, you know, Ali just shared with, you know, all of you for the different schools or the different service areas. And then this coming fall, 2024, you know, the provost has, um, you know, looked at, wanted to do some focus groups because typically when we get the data back, we see the results, you know, we see that, you know, certain things are trending, there's certain gaps here and there, but it's hard for us to get at the why. Why does it look like that? And what can we do to, you know, close those gaps? So we hope that, you know, with this, we can look at focus groups throughout the different areas and, you know, look at it in detail and address some of those gaps. So that's what we're going to be leveraging this particular tool to do, hopefully, as a part of this whole process. OK, so a lot of it is going to be very, very dependent on how much of a response rate we get. OK, so, you know, that's why I wanted to you know share out well, in this group here what we have. And these are some of the you know sample class engagement questions. OK, so say, for example, your know, question set number four here talks about, you know, ask in your experience at this college during the academic year about how often have you done each of the following? So you can see here, you know, question A here asked, uh, ask questions in class or contributed to class discussions. Did you do that very often, often, sometimes or never? OK, did you make a class presentation? You know, very often, often sometimes never. Okay. And then, you know, on the other side too, you know, as they're down at the very bottom, you can see, did you skip class? You know, very often, often, sometimes never. Okay. So this is where it's going to be important for us to see, hopefully our students, you know, really being thoughtful and, you know, telling us what they are doing um, so that we can 
see how engaged they are. See if there's any gaps that you know are in certain areas that we can help with. In addition, you'll see that you know we also have questions that pertain to our student services areas. Okay, so there is the frequency of use scale, there's a satisfaction scale, there's an importance scale. You know, are you using academic advising and planning? You know, how frequently are you using them? How satisfied are you with the, their services? And how important is it to you that you know we have you know, academic advising and planning? Okay, so these are some of the sample questions that uh, we will be able to slice and give to our services, um, you know, student services area to see how they're doing. And so, you know, that's why uh, we wanted something that will be systemic that we can then just do one survey and it will be collected for everybody. In addition, you know, some of you may have, may be aware that you know we have other initiatives at the college. Okay, and. These are what the SESI calls the culture of caring special question set. OK, so in blue here, you'll see, you know, some of the most current uh, ones that we have here is talking about how they're, you know, behaving in class, you know, they how they feel if they could succeed academically in class or at the college here, how the instructors, you know, are uh, how they're expecting you know them to do in class and so these are some of the you know more coursework type of related in blue then you see in the uh, yellow here i have you know highlighted questions that have like you know i feel invisible to faculty and staff my instructors mm -hmm. care about my success college uh, staff or others uh you know other than my instructors care about me okay and having that feeling of belonging okay so you know these are questions that you know or you know things that we have talked about at the college okay then in the gray area we talk about basic needs okay so in the last 30 days did your college ever help you get food when you could not afford to purchase it okay how about you know affordable housing rent utility bills okay how about you know uh, support other college support and you know if you're a parent or a caregiver, you know, is there any, you know, support there for you? Okay, so these are relevant and updated type of the most hot topic basically at the college uh, or in, in the two year uh, college realm. Uh, you'll see in the gray area talks about mental health. Okay, so, you know, uh, there's a lot of, you know, different things that has been coming up with has, which has been affecting our students mental health and so you know these questions you know uh pertain to you know if you need help with your mental health and emotional well-being what would be the greatest barrier that will keep you from seeking that help okay so all of these here uh because it's a special question set will be things that will be collected from all of the schools that are participating, including us. And then we will also um, you know, be able to get our slice and see, you know, how are we in comparison to, you know, the, the national benchmark. And we're going to be looking at it later on by the different schools, you know, if they have enough participants in different service areas, you know, these questions here, we could slice it to that level. OK, and so because this is our first time up the study again uh, after you know uh, 2013 we wanted to have this study be very useful throughout our college not only up top you know with the executive team that sees all the summary but down uh, potentially down to the program level okay so that they can also see how their students uh, feel because we know that you know all students in all the different programs do not feel the same way they don't have the same sense of belonging. They don't have the same sense of support, you know, all of that. So we wanted to be able to take that data and my team data and, you know, survey and data administration, you see in this blue here, we're going to be creating and we're in charge of, you know, you know, putting the report together when it comes back so we can slice and dice it. We've been working with our marketing, uh, you know, area so that we can have a consistent look and feel a branding for this particular study. Um, you know, we actually put this um, into our um, 
technology uh, area, they have a project management office. And so the you know, project management office has been helping us, you know, with this project because it is a very sizable one. It involves, you know, actual build of new infrastructure, data infrastructure to house all of this information so that we can give it and make it so that it's like uh, available throughout the college in various aspects. If you have a question that's in here, we can go ahead and we can take a look at it and slice it out and, you know, do analyses off of that. So we're going to be communicating and this uh, what Ali and I are doing now is part of the communication. You'll be hearing like additional communication coming from the, you know, uh, you know executive uh, area, the cabinet. OK, and along with additional information that will be coming from various uh, areas here. Here's some of the marketing. Uh, we have a live website now that I'm going to be sharing with all of you a little bit later on. You know, as a part of this whole process, just like the SSI, we're going to be giving, um, you know, giveaway prizes that people can get um, put into as a part of them completing the study here. We're going to have like five of the $100 uh, prizes, an Apple Watch, a MacBook Pro. Okay, so these will be, you know, in a drawing for people who actually complete the study. The first week, for those who complete it, the first week, we're going to be doing the $100 drawing. Okay, the second week, then the Apple Watch is going to go. And then the third week, you know, the final week, we're going to be drawing the MacBook. Okay, so we're hoping that this will be helpful, you know, because in addition to some people, you know, wanting to, you know, just provide their uh, feedback to us, not really caring about the prizes, there are some people who are motivated and, and you know, do, wow. do want to go ahead and, you know, participate so they can, you know, uh, get some of the prizes. Okay, so I just want to see that you, you will get, you will see the branding here throughout the college and you may already start to see some of this, but when you see it, this is what we're doing, is, you know, with the SESI. So, you know, on the projector wall, you know, you'll see some stuff, you know, throughout our TVs, you know, the different TVs in uh, different areas, you'll see some of that too. Okay, and then here's what we're trying to do. I was uh, saying that we have currently, as of the 17th, we have about, you know, 10,987 students that we've pulled from our system that we will be sending invitations to. Very likely when we do uh, send it out, it will probably be more than that just because, you know, there are some students who may be registering after the 17th. OK, so uh, we're going to be pulling, uh, you know, the list and things like that on students before the week before so that we can get as many students that have been, you know, enrolled late to. So hopefully it'll probably be over, you know, the 10,000 closer, to, you know, to like 11 something okay but you see we would like to have like a 25 percent response rate okay and you know this is close to what we have done previously in our spring administration of the student satisfaction inventory okay so you'll see here you know our degree credit students we have roughly about 98 almost like uh you know 10,000 students there we need about you know 24 you know for that uh you know 25 percent there you know 2,400 there, academic advancement, the high level courses, you know, there's about 1,100 uh, currently there. So we need about 281 students there. So close, you know, roughly with everything about 27, uh, you know, 100 students, hopefully um, we'll be taking, you know, the survey. Okay, and so we're communicating out, we're doing um, what we call the uh, communication roadshow, just to let everybody know, okay, that we're going to be doing this. And, you know, as you can see, the Student Senate General Assembly is, you know, today. So we're providing some of this information to you. So hopefully you are aware and you can also help, um, you know, our other students, uh, you know, uh, participate. I know that last time when I was here, you know, talking to you, uh, all of you about uh, the SSI or Student Satisfaction Inventory, you were you know, asking how you can help, you know, this is where, you know, we see that you could help with, you know, with this here. I know that, um, you know, later on, we will have some uh, booths available, okay, so that, you know, people can also sign up to help uh, man, uh, you know, staff some of the booths there so that we can have people um, or students actually talking to our um, other students to um, have them participate, because the more that we have, the better off we're going to be in reaching that goal. In addition, you know, once we start to look at the numbers, 
Okay. And so say, for example, if this is the service area. So we're going to go to the service areas. We're going to tell them, hey, we need to have your help so that you can give us like uh, you can uh, help our students to complete this. We need a 95 percent confidence level that, you know, the data that comes back is useful for us. You know, if you are part of early college, you know, if you're part of, you know, disability resource services, any one of those things that's here, we're going to give you your numbers. Here's the estimated population for your group, and here's how many uh, you know, students you need to help uh, get that to the 95% confidence level. Okay, so this is the service area that will be going to do that. Uh, the schools will also have something similar. Okay, so these are all the different schools. And so in here, you know, you see some of the programs. If you're a part of like the accounting program and you want to leverage your study here, we'd like for you to get like 115 students, you know, to go ahead and do that. If you're the school, you know, the school overall, if you're a business and applied arts, you know, you need to have 301 students to participate. Okay, but the thing with this, some of these is that the 95% confidence level is up at the top level. If we're looking at, you know, going down to the lower, lower level or dissecting the information by, say, for example, of black and brown males, you know, then we need to have, you know, a lot more of our black and brown males uh, participating so that we can actually, you know, statistically significant number of students that are there so that we can say, yes, you know, this is how they, uh, we can be confident that they are filling a particular way, or here's the gap as it is that, you know, our students are telling us. And as a part of this whole process, we know that we will be getting at the why. OK, so that's where the focus groups may come in, because when we see, oh, gosh, you know, uh, why are you know some of our students uh, feeling this particular way in the school of business? Then, you know, we could go through that and hopefully do additional, um, you know, dive in to get at the why. OK, so uh, before I actually do, um, you know, open up for questions, I just want to share. <clears throat> This is our current website that when we go live, this website here will have the link that the you know, students can actually click on and can, you know, participate in the study. But before then, you know, all the stuff that's coming, uh, you know, here, if you see some of the QR codes that are on some of the screens, you know, this is where it will come to. And you'll see that, you know, our student voices matter because we've listened to our students before. Some of the things that we have made changes to are like our Wright Street entrance gateway. If you have ever been here before, you know, this is what we hist historically look like. You know, this, is, this was our, you know, gateway before, okay? And then, you know, after that, you know, we did go through referendum. We talked to our students, you know, they were uh, talking about, you know, where do I go if I'm a new student? There's like no place that I like I can go because there's so many different areas. And so afterwards, this is the new gateway, you know, new entrance. And then, you know, the textbook rental program is one that I, I know the student senate was like really, really adamant about. And they, you know, you saw that each time it came back, you know, from the SSI, uh, that, you know, book was just like too expensive. And so, you know, the student senate took that on as one of the major projects that they did. Uh, and they leveraged that, you know, study to really, you know, help inform and got, you know, the uh, you know, textbook rental program, which over time has saved like millions of dollars since 2019 when we implemented that. Okay, so the other thing is, you know, the comfort, you know, comfortable seatings. I don't know how many of you were here when our halls look like this. OK, you know, it was like locker rooms down there and, you know, this is where they were sitting. And so, you know, as a part of the whole process, it was like, uh, can we get something that would be more inducive to students being able to, you know, just sit and chill for the next, you know, uh, class and such. And so all of these here is due to a lot of the student feedback that we were getting when we were looking at, you know, what can we do to make our, you know, spaces better for our students. Okay, the simplified admissions form is another thing. Okay, you can't very well see that. And it's not so physical like, you know, our spaces and things like that. But, you know, it was, uh, you know, in People were having uh, some issues with, you know, the forms not being, you know, it being too complicated and things like that. So we did do that. In addition, the latest thing that we've done is having fr uh, family friendly study rooms. OK, and so here's a picture of the Watertown study room. You know, we see in some of our other studies that, you know, 42 percent of our uh, college students who uh, were 
attending our school had uh, infant to school age children. And so if they were studying, there was like no place where they can just actually be there with their child in a safe spot so that they can study. Okay, so these are some of the things that we have been doing and, you know, we hope to be able to do this because, you know, our students is, the, you know, are the main reason why we're here. Okay, so I will now turn it over to anyone who may have any questions as a part of this. <laughs> Maybe burrito. So, hi, so uh, honestly, every time you come here, I just want to want to say I'm always like jaw drop with the amount of information you can come at us with because like you always come with a wealth of information. I'm always impressed. So like, first of all, props to that. Second of all, are we attached to the timeline on that survey? Like, I know it ends right before spring break. So February 17th to March 8th, I believe. I wonder if there's any way to extend it somehow where we, ha we have our Senate election. And honestly, it might be good to tie certain things around together and then be like, hey, everyone vote on this one thing because we're going to go hard on voting on the Senate election. I know we're, we're recruiting some other people into it. I don't know if it's possible to pair them together. Obviously, you either want to go before spring break or after spring break, but I don't know if that timeline is set in stone for you. Yeah, uh, good question. OK, um, you know, with the timeline, because we have to work with our uh, external vendor, you know, SESI, which is at mm -hmm. University of Texas, uh, they are the one that turn it on and off for us. OK, so we need to go ahead and give them like a time frame so that they can do that. In addition, you can see that the project started in September of last year because yeah. there were a lot of different things, a lot of different moving parts and things like that that we needed to do. So the timeline is pretty much what you see on there. Uh, you know, each uh, week you'll be getting uh, as a student, uh, you'll be getting a invitation for those students who complete like the first time, you know, you won't be getting it again. But, you know, we'll send it out again for the second week and then, you know, uh, finally for the third week. OK, so, you know, uh, the time frame there, we didn't want to have to interfere with your spring break. <laughs> or your yep. or your, some of your, you know, um, midterms or anything like that. So we were hoping that these dates here would be the best ones that we could get. But, you know, so, think so, so. to see if oh. there's anything else we could do to maybe, you know, help you all um, get the word out there. We are more than happy to do that. But in terms of changing the time frame, that's yeah, good. Okay. Uh, yeah, just to follow up, okay, so timeline can't move, that's fine. So one of the things that happened with the Student Activities Board, so a lot of us in here were part of the Student Activities Board, we had weekly meetings um, leading up to our, you know, like we had one uh, every single week for one month, and then during the actual time of it, we met weekly to talk about how we were going to strategize and promote the Student Activities Board. We had a historic turnout where we had over 600 students, nearly 700 students vote on that election. I know that's not quite the numbers that you wanted, but if we like students had time to understand and know about this, because I know that you told us about it last semester, but I, this is the first time I was hearing that it was going to happen from February 17th to March 8th. So I feel a little blindsided, not that we can't help, but I feel like if student groups like united the same way that we did last semester, um, that might do a lot for it. I don't know if there's any way to maybe present this to student activities board soon because a lot of student leaders are in that organization getting yeah. you know, EL in on this. I feel like we can do this, but having just heard about this now and knowing that's February 17th, which is less than a month away, I feel a little dicey about it, but I'll do my best as I did last semester. So yeah. No, this is this is awesome. You know, I, I just really appreciate all of you having partnered with us you know, in the past and now partnering with us with this year, you know, and as a part of the whole process, you know, feel free to if you all feel like, you know, you want to share the presentation out or, you know, share out this website or anything like that, please do so. OK, we can also do, you know, come and talk yeah. to people or anything else that you feel like would be helpful. Um, you know, and as a part of of the whole student life thing, I know that in the past we've done competitions within the different groups or the different you know student clubs, so that if more people are there to uh, help to staff the uh, you know booths, we will have the booth available for like three days, whereby you know if people come, they can get popcorn, they can get you know uh, swags, they could you know do other things there at the booth. OK, so this is where, you know, if some of you could help with, you know, 
just being available during that time, you know, to uh, encourage others. Or if you are part of like different groups, such as, you know, the TRIO program or things like that, because we will be able to um, slice the data by, uh, you know, this, these, you know, special population rice group and things like that, just to see how your uh, those particular students are feeling uh, in comparison to some of our other, uh, you know, different groups. Uh, because like we said, you know, there are some that get more holistic support you know, and then there's those who may not have as much uh, support with their journey here at the college. And so we want to be able to share that out and, you know, see how we can improve in the various areas. Yeah, I'll email you out some things later, like ideas that I have. But I do think, and just the last thing I'll say, I do think it'd be a good idea to have like a, this sort of discussion group amongst like student leaders to talk about strategies for how to get the word out here. Because I think that worked really well for SAB. I know people are willing to do it and they're also capable of doing it. So that's just my last suggestion to you that people can do it. They just need to know about it. That's my first time yeah. about it, but uh, we'll hear yeah. more now. So, yeah. yeah, well, thank you so much because like I said, um, we didn't know because you guys, you know, you know, the student senate meets like every other, uh, is it like every month or so, you know, with different topics and things like that. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't know when would be like a good time for us to actually come in. And as a part of this, I think that we, uh, we also invite the, you know, senate president to sit on the our councils, but you know, sometimes you are not as available, you know, and so, you know, and and. You know, there's there may be some changes and things like that too. So, um, yeah, whatever okay. we can do to to you know help. And as a part of this, when the data comes back, we welcome anybody that is sitting here to come and help us analyze. Okay, and say, you know, uh, here are the things that we're working on. What can we use from this particular study to you know help us? Or you can even go, you know, what is in the study that we should be focusing in on, you know, as a student senate? What is important to our students? Okay, so those have been things that we've um, you know partnered on in the past to you know get us so that you could have some data to help make informed type of decisions on what you might want to focus on. Definitely. Okay, thank you. Uh, Vivi Gordon, that's the last question because we're only at one minute. Sure. Sorry. Um, my, it's a suggestion, not actually a question. Um, when the uh, booths are set up, I'm just hoping there might be able to be tablets there because uh, when we had our tabling for SAB, some students had problems with doing the QR code on their phone. So I just wanted to recommend that. Oh, thank you so much. Our booths will, that will be set up will actually be laptops. Okay, so in the past, we six laptops that are hardwired because I know how if you're like halfway through it and then something happens to your technology, you know, then it's so frustrating. So we want to be sure that we actually have the, you know, laptops hardwired and, you know, so that way hopefully everybody can, you know, do it because it does take quite a bit of time and investment of student time that, you know, you may not have. And so we know how valuable your time is and we wanted to be sure that, you know, while you're doing it at the different booths in the different areas, because not only is it uh, at the Truax campus, it will be at the regionals too. Okay, it will be at South. Okay, and so, you know, each uh, campus you. to get that information. And when the uh, information comes back, the data will be sliced by the different campuses. And there are differences among the campuses. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming, Ali. Thank, Thank you, you so much for having us. We appreciate yes. you. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 I'll email you. Uh, <laughs> report from Officer Advisor and Standing Committee. Um, Executive Council President Report. I have a long report. Uh, as everybody can see, uh, we have some new face. We have some people who left us at the end of the semester last, and we lost another senator like this week as well. Uh, we currently don't have any, we only have one senator in our regional campuses, and all our other campuses are vacant. That's something we have to work on to fill out and we have other senator uh, position. I think it was three position. Uh, hopefully today we can fill out one. Um, 
there is shared governance vacancy. That is something we have to be focused on to fill out because that's how we show Senate to the college. And in the shared governance cons um, council, the vacancy we have is IT council, uh, student affairs council, parent support group, they need another senator, and academic council and transportation analysis. If anybody interested of representing Senate on any of those um, council, you can just submit your application and the uh, executive council we make decision about it. Um, the Senate committee, the Senate committee is our internal committee. Um, we don't we don't have a amount of people like a maximum of people we need to have. It's we need at least. We need like for it to work. We cannot only one person. We don't want to put the one per, one work on on one person. The other thing I want to talk about Senate committee is everybody can sit on any committee if you're not nominated to it. But I don't want you to forget why you here in the first place. You here to get education. I don't want Senate to be a burden for you to for you to neglect neg you know neglected your duty as a, as a student, you know? Um, I don't want you to think too much. That is why, and if you're interested in being on a committee, you can submit your application to the executive council and we will make a decision about it. Um, why I say you have to submit your, you have to submit your, you have to submit your um, application is because if you are nominated to a council like a committee, the, your attendance is done. If you're not there, it's going to count against you. But if you're just sitting at the committee, if you don't go, nothing happens. But we need people to be focused and committed on the committee to, to be able to keep them accountable. Office hours. Um, we just open it on Monday. We're not going to penalize anybody if we didn't do it this week because we just open it, but moving forward, you have to put your office hours. Nobody is gonna put all your office hours. Do you have a question? I'll wait till the end, but I think Kai also does. Just a point of clarification, they were not active last week because they were not required. That's the only thing I wanted to say. Like, not required, that's why it wasn't open. Yeah. Um, yeah, office hours, nobody gonna do it for you. Everybody is adult. You have to put your office hours. And when it's the cutout time, is the cutoff time. There is no grace period. Um, attendance, the general assembly. You are late if the call, like the roll call, is done. If you're coming after the roll call, you are late. If you, if you're not gonna be here, you can let us know you're not gonna be here. It can be an excuse, absence, or unexcused. And the bylaws stated what is considered an excused absence, an emergency sickness. Um, but if it's something you already plan, let's say uh, you know you have a meeting, you have a general assembly every 4.30 on Thursday, and you uh, make an appointment on four, uh, Thursday at 4.30, that is not excused because you already know our schedule. We cannot change it. Um, as the, your president, I will be um, traveling to Washington um, to talk to a representative from Wisconsin. Uh, one of our main points we're going to be talking about is Pell Grant and staff benefit for students. Uh, I want your feedback. You can email me if you use Pell Grant. What is the um, what is the experience is if you have anything you want to say, like I can, you know, scream it and then I can uh, find a better way to represent student Senate. And Robert Wolves, like I said last time, we follow Robert Wolves. And if we're going to suspend it, someone have to make a motion. And that's conclude my report. Thank you. Administration and Finance Committee, Mr. Brito. Thank you very much. The new meeting time for the Finance Committee will be on Mondays from 3.30 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. That'll be weekly or as needed, may not be weekly. Um, I'll let people know if that's being canceled or not. Friendly reminder that Senate members should submit written reports to Michael Malone, the Senate Communications Coordinator. The preliminary meeting minutes and agenda will be sent out by noon on Tuesday for review by Senate members, then will be sent to the Clarion for publication in the weekly newsletter. 
Additionally, we'll be sharing the agenda meeting minutes in person on the Senate office door and online on Wolfpack Connect. I recently sent out an email outlining the guidelines from the state of Wisconsin about open meetings law and public records law. That's why we need to send those out on time just to be remain in compliance with that. Last semester, we were kind of liable for that. Theoretically, we could have been sued for not being in compliance with that as a public um, uh, entity that's supported by government funding. Um, on to the duties with the uh, Senate Finance Committee. Um, while working with Grace Songo of the Executive Leadership Team, you notice that for the, um, that uh, the budget requests need more funding. Given that last year we kind of cut some of the budget for certain clubs, so now we'll be asking the SAB for for uh, expanded funding so that we can have enough money to cover some of that. Uh, the gap of club funding requests. For the three year plan, I'd like to explain our goal number one transportation to the overall sustainability, which is a more holistic approach to multiple issues. And uh, that can include transportation, which we currently have, as well as other issues like recycling missions and renewable energy systems. Additionally, I would like to add either alumni relations or international student initiatives as sections to our three year plan. We also have a discussion later about other ideas than the ones I just suggested so that maybe you can help me think about what we need to put in our three year plan. That is the end of my report. Thank you. Legislative Affair Committee, VP Juf. VP Juf has sent me her report, if I might give it. Okay. Thank you. According to VP Juf, I am working with Advisor Green to send out a letter for the upcoming WSG annual legislative seminar. The legislative committee is down to one member we will be looking forward to interested senators to be nominated and assigned to our team. To upcoming, our upcoming meeting is Wednesday at 11 a.m. every other week. Thank you. End of my report. Thank you. Team Development Committee, Big Brother. Thank you. Um, so, Team Development will be scheduling a meeting shortly. Um, we are just trying to in a time where the majority of us can meet or at least are required members. And we only have a 15 minute slot right now. <laughs> so that's not gonna really work, but um, I'll be announcing something tomorrow by tomorrow and we'll just have to work from there. We'll also record our meetings to help if there's anyone who wants to uh, go back and see what we have going on. Um, you already made the announcement about the parent committee. I guess that's it. Thank you. Public relations committee currently vacant. No. Yeah. Yep. Current vacant. Advisor report. Advisor Green. I, I mean, I really don't have much to say uh, other than just uh, doing what needs to be done as an advisor, meeting with the executive council, and um, getting ready for uh, things that are coming up uh, through your plan, elections. The WSG meeting and so on. So everything's going good and everybody is doing what they need to be doing and following the rules. So uh, that's the end of my report. Thank you. Thank you. Report from Special and Select Committee, Senate Activity Board, Peter Brito. Our next meeting will be tomorrow, Friday, January 26th, from 1 30 to 3 30 p.m. That Thank concludes my report. Thank you. Thanks, both affordability community Senator Sierra Brunner. Not here. Is not here. I'm absent. Regional outreach and engagement community Senator Malwa. Uh, the only thing I have is our first meeting of the spring semester will be this Friday at noon. Thank you. Um, can you send me the link? I can send you the link. I will do that uh, later on today. Okay. Thank you. Transportation analysis community currently vacant. Student parent support group. Be credit. Um, just the only announcement is that uh, we are looking for a second student senate member to be on the parent committee. Um, it would be ideal if you have children, but you don't necessarily need to have children. You're really interested in having the student lens on things. Um, we're in the process of uh, doing a survey that's going to go out to all of the students as well as faculty. Um, as well as staff within the college, because we're looking at a child care uh, or a, a policy for children on campus in general, whether it's a parent, a student parent, whether it's a staff parent, so forth, a manager. So it's going to be a really comprehensive one. 
and it's not done yet, but that's the current update. Thanks. Our next, did you want to know what our next meeting is? Yeah. It's uh, February 6th. Let me just pull it up. I believe it's at 10 a.m. Oh my gosh. I know I click on stuff and then it doesn't want to cooperate. Probably because I have it up. <laughs> Probably. There we go. Calendar. So we meet the first uh, Wednesday of the month, and our next meeting will be at 11 on February 7th. Thank you. Public safety advisory committee, Senator Castle. No report. Thank you. Report from regional. Oh, wait, sorry. Question. When is the next meeting? Tomorrow, 11 a.m. Gotcha. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, report from regional and metro campuses. Reads very Senator Stacey Brennan, uh, absent. Watertown currently vacant. Fort Beach currently vacant. Fort Atkinson currently vacant. Goodman South currently vacant. Report from College Assembly and Share Governance Council. College Assembly Senator Air. Yeah, on January 10th, we met and uh, it was basically uh, a review of what uh, we're going to be doing going, going on forward and we were reviewing the guiding principles of the shared governance, which uh, which is uh, centered on the needs of students. Uh, number one, uh, representation and inclusive system, and trying to find a timely way to uh, have things uh, run on time. And number four is accessibility, so open to change and communication. Number five, promoting work and that is meaningful. And number six, active engagement. So. Uh, it's basically a refresher, so we broke with just uh, yeah, yeah. It wasn't uh, too much anything new, but uh, yeah, just to uh, refresh our, ourselves on what uh, shared governance should be uh, going on forward. And that, that's my report. Thank you. Academic Council currently vacant. Diversity and Community Relationship Council report. Um, so we had a training on, I believe it was December 18th, um, and it was it was a really good training. Um, we had someone that came in and just kind of talked to us um, and helped us to look at ways of, look at the information. Oh, I can't think of how to word it correctly, and I apologize. I will, I believe I can just pull the link. It's like an accountability workshop is basically what it was. Mm -hmm. It was looking at ways of how to um, positively find, uh, look at accountability options within a college. There we go. I can't think of how to say it any nicer than that. And so it was an interesting workshop. Um, we did it online by Zoom. And I think I said the date wrong. It was actually December 15th, sorry. Um, our next meeting for that group is going to also be February 7th, and I believe they are at 2 o'clock that day. Is that sound right to you? I actually am getting very lost with where the meetings are because we're we've removed the meeting time and date has moved. So like I, I honestly don't know where it's at right now. So. It's uh, 2 p.m. February 7th. Okay. Probably. Thank you. Uh, Facility Planning and Investment Council, Senator Willis. We're going to have our first meeting of the semester on Wednesday, February 7th at 2 p.m. So I have, other than that, I have no, no report. Hey, do um, you have a question? Yes, I do. Um, Senator Willis, I came into some information. <clears throat> And some information that you might be of interest. Um, I heard that in automotive, the men's bathroom doors have about a two, three inch gap in them when they're shut and they won't stay shut. So I don't know if that's of interest to facilities and planning, but I, think I, I, I thought it might be. Up. So <laughs> thank you. I was talking to You're some diesel tech up. students, so they wanted to they, they wanted to bring that forward. Thank you for bringing it up. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank I'll, you. I'll get it taken care of. Thank you so much. Not a problem, Katrina. Thank you. Thank you. Finance Council of Thanks. Thank you. We will be presenting two issues to the February College Assembly on Wednesday, February 14th. The Employee Apparel Policy 
and the tuition refund drop deadlines. The employee apparel policy includes updating the handbook information regarding uniforms to be in compliance with IRS guidelines. The Finance Council will be taking up the following question. What is an appropriate drop deadline for students to receive 100% tuition refund that both prioritizes student needs and adheres to WTCS and district tuition and fee refund regulations? Our next meeting is Friday, at Friday February 23rd from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Thank you. Uh, information Technology Council currently vacant. Institutional Effectiveness Council, Senator Castle. Hi, everybody, and thank you uh, for granting me the floor yet again. Um, as we heard from my esteemed chair, uh, Ali, today, uh, we're working on accreditation, and of course, SESI is coming up. So, looking forward to that, looking forward to spreading the message to that. And our meeting schedule is a little variable right now. So, it's going to change here. It's Thursdays at 1 p.m. every other week. It's Mondays right now, so I can't make it until February, but there's like one meeting I'm going to miss. So, but then it changes back to the Thursdays, which I can make. Yeah. Yes. Additional question you may not know the answer to this. Yes. During the presentation, I did ask uh, Al Ali if um, about, you know, hiring for people that don't have certain degree levels. Is there any sort of knowledge about that, or is that something I should email you about you later? Um, I don't have any information about that currently, but if you send me a reminder email, I can bring that forward at the next IEC. Yeah, I'd like to put you and Ellie on that just so that perhaps it can get taken up as an issue. Of course. Council. Yeah, I would love to take that up. <laughs> Thanks. I also have a question. Of course. Do you know how they are um, picking the classes that they're putting the tutors in? I don't know of Ali. I didn't feel like that question got answered. If you could look into that. Yeah, I can certainly look into it. That would be great. Follow up email would be appreciated. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you. Student Affairs Council currently vacant. Unfinished business. Is there anybody who want to nominate anybody for the position of public relation? VP of public relation. OK. We are officially closing the vice president of public relation nomination at 515. We only have two candidates. Yep. Senator Michael Malone and Senator Kodiak Castle. New business, electing a new vice president of public relation. Everybody gonna get two minutes to present themselves. All right. Um, according to Ellie, who I spoke to today about this. It's five minutes to present yourself and five minutes of questioning for mm -hmm. candidate. Correct. Okay. Five minute question. Five minute. Five minute presentation. Five minute question. Wonderful. Just question about so they each do a presentation first and then they each get five minute questions or how are we doing this? Yeah, presentation and questions. In like in a row or do we like alternate? I think that's how in they did it last time. Okay. You wanna make the motion now? So, so I actually didn't understand. So you, all you said was that I think that's how you did it last time. But I'm switch, which one are we referring to? Are we switching or are we doing it all at once? Doesn't really matter. Well, okay. which one are we doing? That's the part I'm I, um, <laughs> I'm seeing too <laughs> many angry. <laughs> Someone answer the question. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I get Senator Kessel. Uh, motion to alternate. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, just I'll go first. And I'll present myself, then you can question me, and then Mike will follow me. Okay. Okay. In the same order. Again, do I have a second? Do it better. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect that. Any discussion, second? Any discussion? Yes. I was just going to say, I feel like we should be consistent with the way we did it last time, which was um, each party talking five minutes and then the questions being presented to both parties at the same mm -hmm. time. That was I'll where I, I was going to go. I look at okay, now. I, what we do. <laughs> I, friend, oh, sorry, is that a friendly amendment? Yes. I will. I will accept the friendly amendment. Okay. Um. Uh. So that's yeah, now on the table. Discussion. Okay. Discussion. <laughs> no discussion about that. No, I just wanted to for consistency sake of what we did last time. Okay. Um. So we have eat it back. Before you ask for a uh, vote, 
Uh, the motion on the table right now is alternating for the presentation and then for the question, at, it's going to happen both at the same time. Okay. And then you say, we were all in favor of et cetera, et cetera. Okay. You have a question? Okay. I just like to point out that I have the weak symbol for it. Okay. Oh. We'll make it quick. Okay. <laughs> I think what time do you stick to? Mm -hmm. uh, close to six o'clock. Is that typically when you have to leave? Yeah, I have to be home by six thirty. Okay. Then we get a table. You want a table then for next meeting, or or do we do? Can, can we move that up to the agenda? Them? I and then come yeah. back to the nomination point of order yeah. because I can interrupt. Sorry for saying this last little bit. I think that we can't, Kai, we can't amend the agenda after it's been approved, can we? That table base. We can, well, That's we, well, we can't move something forward ahead of no. something else. Yeah, I didn't think we could. Yeah. So in that case. Okay. And but um, I make a motion to table the um, public relations election for 10 minutes. Oh, oh, oh <laughs> OK, do you second that? I second that. I forget. Any discussion? No, other than the, that was an impressive <laughs> motion. <laughs> Anybody was, everybody was in favor of uh, tabling the election for the vice president of public relations? For 10 minutes. For 10 minutes. As well as, sorry, friendly amendment, you need to table both of them through your plan discussion as well. I was getting down to that. And once you guys yeah. do this one, I was going to say, should we add them the next yeah. together? Okay. Or, yeah. We add, you accept them? Yep. Okay. okay. We're going to table the election for the vice president of the coalition and the discussion of the three year plan for 10 minutes. Um, everybody was in favor of it, right? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Thank meeting. you. Thank you. Now we're gonna open to the nomination of our new senator. Uh, you're just gonna have two minutes to talk about yourself, and then we're gonna take three questions, and then after we're gonna go to the vote. You want to say oh, and introduce yourself? Yeah. So basically, what you're gonna do if you're doing your candy is just explain what would make uh, to the Senate what you think would be good characteristics as to why you should be a senator and what you would bring to the team to help on the for students do i have to yes yes <laughs> <laughs> that is a that is a, no, a, a, a speaking a speaking position okay. <laughs> i'm super nervous when i did it myself so oh so basically why would be a good candidate for a senator um, I would try my best to attend every meeting. I'm <laughs> really good about giving information. Um, and I could mention I don't know. Okay. Uh, do we have questions for Kennedy? Did you call them? Um, Kennedy, can you um tell me about a leadership um? Something, something in relation to your leadership experience. Um, so I'm a part of SAB as a board member, and then BSU as the communications coordinator. Yeah. Any other question? Oh, and I forgot to mention that I will be uh, the vice president of Fresh Ten. Okay. <laughs> yeah, can you talk about some issues that you're really passionate about? Like, what is something that you see in the world that is wrong that you want to change? And that's why, I mean, I figure that's why you're in consent because you want to change something. Like, what is it that you see in the world that you're like, damn, that needs to change? Um, I would have to think about this. <laughs> Let me ask a hard question. What is the meaning of life? <laughs> No, it's like, yeah. <laughs> that's a great answer. <laughs> okay, um, I think we're gonna move to the uh, to the election, right? Yeah, yeah. So, 
I'll share my screen for the uh, QR code um, and it's also for the name. And this is for our general center? Yeah. Yep. So here is the link and then here it is my screen and that's a QR code. So they're both going to take you to the same place and uh, everyone knows the dealio. And while you're doing that, I can't hear Oh, uh, uh, it's all for stat standard right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nah, I already voted, so. <laughs> there one open for me. There we go. I feel like this is quiet. Because <laughs> I've never been put on the spot like that. <laughs> Y'all should have gave me a little bit more hands up before y'all. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it or not. I should have said something about this part. Not on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of being that was yeah, it's, it's a learning opportunity. <laughs> I think well, we are getting used to it. I'm gonna talk more. So. <laughs> it's okay. There'll be many more times. <laughs> Perhaps we should put so, the other so thing we after. Go. Uh, how many did Kevin. you uh, when you roll? Like, oh, Eleven. But 11. there's not currently 11 here right now, so let's subtract. I mean, there's seven, seven goals. Seven. Okay, so there should be eight total. I believe, oh, actually, no, minus Johnny, because you can't vote, correct? No, I can't vote. Yeah, so yeah, we've got seven goals, then. and we need eight, but um, maybe someone's not one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, I Cameron think and well, I guess Cameron, Maggie, and Katrina, so yeah, uh. VP Willis and uh, what? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Willis and uh, Senator Wilkin, if that is. Senator Wilkin and Willis, yeah. And uh, Avila. Wilkin oh, Willis. Oh, yeah, Avila. Avila. Senator Avila also. It should be nine. Uh, Senator Avila, did you vote mm -hmm. too? Cameron said he voted. Cameron voted. Okay. For an uh, yes, I did. Mine should have went in. Right. Right. Here, I will I vote one more time and then we'll just go keep going with it. I mean, it is a majority. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I'm assuming the majority, uh, you are uh, now the next elected uh, general senator. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, President Marshall is going to uh, swear you in now. The talk of Exactly. The talk of film. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I am so nervous about my legislative. Would you rather? Please, 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 do you solemnly swear to do your civic duty to serve your college, your community, and most importantly, our fellow student and academic faculty? Yes. Do you swear to treat all people equally and fairly that you will strive to create a student setting which is welcoming to everyone? Do you swear to listen, speak out, and act in ways which will empower all students? Yeah. Do you swear to carry all these tasks to the best of your ability? I, Jamani Michelle, President of Student Senate, having heard you recite the Senate, Senate of, of Office in front of the General Assembly, do invite you, appoint you to the position of Senator for the 2023-2024 school year. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. We have a new Senator. Now we have one position for All right. And maybe another so, one soon. Yeah, you got to take off, right? <laughs> <laughs> You'll uh, be hearing from uh, President Michonne and uh, VP Crowder about gaining you um, on board onboarded with everything. So, okay. uh, which includes an office key, the center office, right? So, but as for right now, yeah, you gotta get out of here and you can still listen on your phone yeah. if you want. But congratulations, you are the new I will join. Thank you. Drive safe, though. 
Okay. Don't be like our beloved president. Oh, we should. <laughs> From the top again. From the top, yeah. Because mm -hmm. that, that was how it's the order in which it was suspended. Are you going to eat that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Point of order. And I just uh, clarify, I do not think that the motion ever went with, was the motion 100% voted on about. Yeah, it was. Friend. Okay, I just was making sure. Um, so yeah, you can continue to the show. Okay. New business. Um, <laughs> Going back to the election of the new vice president on public relation, all the motion with carries and everything. Uh, who gonna go first? Okay, let it apple take the floor. Voice yours five thank minutes you. starting now. Oh, well, thank <laughs> you. well, good evening, everyone. Let's start. I think I did. Which way can you guys see me? I think both ways. Yeah, both ways? Well, yeah, you, now you see me. Yeah. Oh, uh, whatever. Why <laughs> in when they're swearing in? Well, good enough. I just want to make sure everyone can see me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the historic moment. <laughs> so, let's get everything clear. We're going for Vice President of Public Relations. And what are some of the duties of this position. Well, the most well known is obviously the social media aspect. We have some social media stars here in the room that I hope to learn from. I know we've got Kai Brito, one of my all time <laughs> favorite people to see on Instagram. No, really, dude. And I know Maggie Joop is listening, or she was. Oh, she is. Good. Good. We talked about that. So I'm looking forward to learning a lot about social media from these two wonderful individuals and anyone else who has social media experience, as that's a place where I'm not exactly skilled, but I'm willing to learn. So events coordinating, that's another duty. And I'm not necessarily experienced in event coordinating, but I know that we have Annette Crowder here on the team who is very experienced in event coordinating. And that is a skill that I need to learn. And you are an individual that I can learn from. And that is a great thing. So, what are some of the positions that I have held that make me qualified to be the Vice President of Public Relations? Now, one would think that I'd say something like General Senator, and I will, because it's given me the ability to work with very diverse groups of people to understand their needs. And that's something that the Vice President of Public Relations needs very much, to understand what the student body wants and needs and be able to craft a message from us, the Student Senate, that will actually reach their ears. But we need to be one voice because we're one Senate, Senate, blah, blah, blah. we're one Senate and they are one student body. We can't keep looking at them this is maybe just my opinion, but it's certainly how I intend to go about this. We can't keep looking at them like they're this demographic and that demographic and that demographic, which they are, and that's beautiful. But they're also one student body and we represent all of them together. So how do we do that? We have to understand what all of them want and all of them need. And that's a very complex task, which my committee and I, hopefully, will be tackling. Now, we also have the upcoming elections and SESI coming up. Two very, very important issues. As we see, we've got a couple open seats. Now, this is an issue. Not, a, not the most major of issues, but it's a major issue. So, how do we handle that? We need to be out there talking to students all the time. I spent probably between two and three hours in the last two days out there just going table to table, being like, hey, so I'm from Student Senate. How can we make this campus better for you? I talked to Diesel Tech, as I told um, Senator Willis, talked to Vet Tech, I talked to um, photography people, I talked to, I talked to, um, digital media, I learned that they need more iPads and more cameras because they've only got like less than five total to rent out in their program. That's a major concern of theirs. But we don't know these issues because we're not out there talking to them. 
And we're I, I don't mean to say that we're either talking to our demographics that we're interested in, but we're missing some things. And that's what I intend to bring as VP public relations. I tend to bring a more holistic approach, an approach that says we need to see everyone. We need to see the LGBTQ community. We need to see the African American community. We need to see the immigrant community. We need to see the Asian community. We need to see everyone. We need to see everyone. We need to see the diesel techs because they don't, frankly, I think, get a lot of support around here. And they feel that way. We need to see everybody. And as an honor student, I know what it's like, as many of you do, to really dedicate yourself to a purpose, to see something come to fruition. Thank you. And to need that purpose in your life. And that's what I really want to bring. Thank you. Yeah. Five minutes is done. Thank you. Um, the next is Senator Malone. Okay, your five minutes start. Good. Your five minutes start now. So my name is Michael Malone. I am a general senator and uh, uh, student senate. I have held many positions, been on many committees, such as the Public Relations Committee. Uh, team development committee. I've assisted with the legislative affairs committee, um, given my input on the uh, public safety advisory committee as well. Um, outside of that, I'm trying to learn how to be more diverse with other groups um, within the college. Uh, that goes to the potential cultural sensitivity training that we're trying to get set up to kind of understand those differences um, among different groups and how we can kind of bridge that gap of um truly understanding what everybody's wants and needs are are you done no i'm not done. <laughs> um yeah <laughs> definitely want to try and get myself out there seeing more of what the uh, student body wants and needs interacting with them more truly understanding what their concerns are and actually advocating for those concerns yeah, thank you. Um, we're going to have three questions for each candidate. Only three? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Sorry, I thought this was like a discussion like together or. There, so we ask each question and they answer each of them. Okay, sorry. In our so going back to the front. You're both going to be in the front. <laughs> <laughs> Is it three or is it five minutes? Five minutes. Yeah, it's it's been five, five minutes. minutes. That's yeah. a five that's what it was. You can ask more than three questions. Yeah, that, <laughs> okay. I'm talking. So, so what are my questions? No, it's five minutes. Well, maybe yours. Okay, five minutes. Five minutes. Uh, President Sean. Hmm? Cameron. Uh, Cameron, I think. Uh, he does have his hand up. Senator Wilkin. Senator Wilkin, you have a question? Yep, sorry. Uh, my question is for Mike. You yes. see, so you listed all the things that you do, and like, quite frankly, you seem overqualified. So that, that's awesome. But with <laughs> being in so many things, taking on a, like a bigger role in the Senate, do you have enough time to do everything? I appreciate that question. That is uh, something that has been brought up by numerous individuals, uh, <laughs> such as former advisor uh, Ellie Rome, uh, our very own. VP uh, Kai Burrito as well. Um, although I have all that stuff, I know going into a position such as this, I would have to step back from certain obligations or responsibilities so that I'm not overburdening myself because um, I know, as it's always stated, you know, you're a student first and then all the other stuff just kind of falls in line. So I have to obviously dedicate enough time management to my studies as well as being successful in that job and I have I'm not going to say which ones I would step back from at this point but I have evaluated certain ones that would make sense I'm sorry I'm going to follow up with or, I know you're not planning on saying that but can you please actually say yes. it because this is, this is a moment where yeah. we vote for you based on this information yeah. so right now if I had to step back from any committees they would be additional ones that I have added on from my original one so I would step back possibly from legislative affairs. I know team development has been a good experience and it would be hard to step back from that one, but that would be 
probably another committee that I would step back from at this point. Not, not saying that I wouldn't ask for my opinion to be solicited or ideas and still be able to provide feedback in a more like informal way, just not actually being involved in weekly like group discussions on stuff. Uh, Senator T. Yeah, uh, I, this one's going to be for both of you. Actually, um, I, I think that this question that was brought up, which I was going to bring up in a different way, um, brings up a great question for both of you, actually. How do you plan on integrating the work you already do into this position or vice versa? Wonderful, wonderful question. Thank you, T. So I am co-anchor with Kylie Phillips of the broadcast news from the Clarion. I see wonderful opportunities working with the Clarion to both bring forward a new radio message on the weekly or um, issue um, dependent uh, newsletters to hopefully get some video out there from the uh, broadcast from the Clarion. Obviously, network with people like you and Kai, and I don't know if anyone else is on Clarion. I'm not in those meetings a lot. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. To work with the Clarion, and I really I meant to talk to you about this before, Kai, but I want to bring the podcast back. <laughs> I'll, let's run it. Co -host, back. Co host, co host, co host. Let's run it back, man. So, and as well, I work um, as the chair of the Public Safety Advisory Committee. Affectionately, affectionately known as PSAC, <laughs> but um, yeah, so I want to use some of the connections that I have from PSA committee to spread the message that we're here for everyone. You know, that's that's really what we're here for, is it not? We're here to advocate for the student body and through public safety, I have a unique lens to get those safety concerns and then I can bring it here and use the public relations foundations that we're gonna have to just knock that out of the park. Um, ben Mello. Yep, so I guess on that same question, one of the things I would do um, so that we're like integrating everybody into the process is we need to continue to do a better job of reaching out to our regional campuses, making sure that everybody is involved, that their opinions are being heard, that we're promoting events and stuff that they want to see at those campuses and actually still getting that that type of feedback where we're being all inclusive of everybody's voice, not just a select few. And that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Um, I wish I would have thought about that. Okay. <laughs> quick, quick question, because there's 30 seconds left. Is it am I in? It's, it's, in, in it's 15 seconds, 16 seconds. Uh, go, go, okay, go. based on goal number two of the three year plan, how do you uh, plan to, you know, actually complete it given the role that you're about to accept? Campus visits. I didn't get to do it. So I really, 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 really want to go do this. I will drive. I will Uber. I will do something on a freaking bike. I have a car. Hey, but let me go. Go. <laughs> Okay, I'll okay. okay. oh, time, time, time's done, time's done. Yeah, Michael answered a question. It would be along the same lines, doing more, uh, getting more out to the campuses, especially the ones that haven't been visited, like Portage and Reedsburg, which is I've been trying to do, and then having more interaction also with all the campus managers, making sure that their concerns on stuff, especially as it relates to public safety, are being heard and resolved in any way that we can do that. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. That's Thank you. Um, oh my god. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Now we're gonna open the election for the uh, old chat. It says in the chat the same, right? So yeah, you again you get the link and use a QR code. I'm not voting, I just want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching you. Especially <laughs> <laughs> super valid. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> or did he? No, I just <laughs> <laughs> I am lawfully <laughs> I got it. 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 I got it.
<laughs> Come on, man, I'm going to the door. <laughs> Welcome back, Maggie. I'm just here, so she's here. Right? She's been hanging out, I think, in the like the, the, yeah, the little class. Yeah. I respect that. But she has a class right now, too. She, it can't. She needs to be graduated. Docs. That's just how this is going to happen. Oh, that's just okay. She needs to graduate, so I think that's just. I just wanted to know to anticipate it. I'll uh, check it in. Uh, did um, Senator Avila and Senator Wilkin, you guys both voted? Uh, if you can just say yes, that would be I voted. Cool. I voted. Cool. Is Katrina not on? It's too long, government. It doesn't look like it. You can't talk to me. What is that? Not so no person. Okay. Yeah. Done. Yes, and yes. Yep, I just said it on the chat. Yep. Yeah, 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 apparently. Yeah. 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 Left or yeah. right. Yeah. 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 Did everyone in the room vote? Yes. Yes. Good. Thank you. How much? How much people is it? Nine people voted. So, um. Did you guys vote? Gotta be. I think it is minus Katrina, minus Giovanni. That's it is nine. It's gotta be over now. Um. That said, um. Congratulations, uh, VP Malone. Oh, oh. Yeah. there we go. You gotta get sworn in again. Yeah, I. Today I do so many elections. <laughs> 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 See how it prepared. <laughs> please place your left hand on the center constitution and balance and raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to do your civic duty to serve your colleagues, your community, and most importantly, your fellow student in a democratic fashion? I do. Importantly, so do you swear to treat all people equally, fairly, and that you will strive to create a student senate which is welcoming to everyone? I do. Do you swear to listen, speak out, I can wait with you on for all students? I do. Do you swear to carry all of this to the best of your ability? I do. I am Giovanni Michel Fidel, President of Student Senate President. Having heard you recite the Student Senate out of office and for of the General Assembly, do hereby appoint you to the position of Vice President of Public Relations for the 2023-2024 school year. Congratulations. Thank you. I would check to see if Senator Wilkin had a question. That was just. I saw the was earlier. <laughs> I also saw a question. Okay. Um. I don't see it anymore. I think people hit the wrong button. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next item is discussion of the three-year plan for Vibrito. Hi, I would like to um, make a motion to suspend Robert's rules for the next 10 minutes. This, this meeting. Oh, okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay, any discussion? Yeah. Everybody was in favor of your hand? Majority. Don't see nobody in. Oh, Angel. Angel. Angel voted. Yeah. Okay, I see Wilkin voted as well. Okay, thank you. Great. So for the three year plan, we have um, currently so so we our three things are transportation is goal number one. Goal number two is Goodman South and uh, and uh, campus outreach and advocacy. And our third one is DIAB coordinator. But last year we achieved that we we're getting ready to appoint a new person. So people, please apply. and Put your names in um, for that specific role if you would like it. But now that we've completed goal number three, we have a new spot that needs to be taken up. Additionally, I also would like to, you know, if anyone has any feedback on my additions to expand goal number one from just transportation to be sustainability, which includes transportation, recycling, and renewable energy, that would also be good in feedback. But right now, the main goal is to take on topics that would be taken, that would be discussed for um, our goal number three, which 
I would like to either take on alumni relations. So that would be um, talking to alumni and the alumni foundation to see if they would be willing to, you know, collaborate with us and see if maybe we can talk um, to the alumni and create that partnership between current students and people who have graduated from here before. Because I think there's people that have that sense of pride. I graduated from Magic College, but, um, you know, they're not connecting with us. So how do we expand that? The other one would be international students. There are quite a few international students at our school. We're a hub for that. And I feel like we should be taking on some of those issues that they're facing as a student senate. And I think both of those things are good, but we do need to pick one and keep our plans limited so we can, you know, actually achieve things. So starting off with those general ideas, does anyone have alternative ideas? Do you like the ideas I pitched? What do we want to select? Numbers, rules. And yep, you can say whatever. I know, but he's got to actually say <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, okay, stop talking, go for it. Okay, so as you know, um, I've been working on the more of the financial aid side right now with like trying to figure out a strategy for this, but I would absolutely love it um, if we could adopt it into our three year project uh, plan, I should say, to uh, take a look at how we can further improve book charge as a whole. Um, currently, the reason why this is coming up is because students over the course of summer and uh, fall had um, been requesting if there was a way they could use financial aid like in a book charge kind of way to pay for art supplies because we no longer carry them here. They are now being required by like the courses and everything to use arts and craftsmen downtown. And I've reached out to the manager and they would like to formalize a business partnership. However, working at it, um, we would think that the best course going forward is to do it through a book charge type of style where we would honestly just probably adopt uh, gift cards where they would we'd be able to check them out here uh, so that we can get it off the ground while we try to work through many other levels of government um, outside of the college. Um, things like that are things that I would like to target, um, seeing what other things that students could benefit from having that type of mythology so that they can utilize um, the most of our community and our school for financial aid. I I would definitely be in support of that. Um, I would Which one the the financial aid book charge expansion. Um, I think another area that we need to look at as far as that is like our um, dental hygiene students, our nursing students, mm -hmm. um, their scrubs and other things that they are required to buy. Um, I don't think it affects our salon students, but I'm not sure because they do have to buy a gigantic kit for their program unless it comes with their program. Maggie has a, a grow kit thing too. I don't know how, where that came from, but I'm sure that it was here yeah, our school that she had purchased. Yeah. Uh, what about diesel? You were talking about them earlier. I think that we have a store here, like an actual like little welding shop and stuff oh. like that like I think. yeah there is a welding shop but are there tools provided by the program or do they have to purchase their tools i will the look program? into that i want to say the and automotive I, program does allow you to use tools in the workshop because there we have a work like you can get we have an auto body shop function the body shop. Yeah. yeah i check with hvac though because i know there's some specialized tools with them mm -hmm. I, I i will check with hvac okay is it is it like Book charge or is it like um material? It's first material, cost material. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but through the book charge program. Is there a way we do you can think do the tax referential program? No, not financial, financial aid. Financial aid. It's mainly yeah. through financial aid. Using financial aid for other materials related to your program. I think that's and program yeah. that might be the best way to do it. Do it so too. basically you're borrowing against your financial aid. You are actively free authorizing it to come out kind of like you do with your tuition. Yeah, okay. but yeah, I mean, for, to be purchased specifically for program charges, yes. like uniforms or for yes. diesel tech program things. So I just know like if it was in the university book charge, I mean, yeah, that's, that's because example. that's what they call it yeah, right now. now. It, yeah. They look into how to expand it so that you could add course materials to the program, that program and every way that they've tried. Mm -hmm. Uh, it ends up increasing the the amount of what kind of eliminates why the program is so cheap and works because it jacks the price up for every student significantly. You said the textbook rental program, right? Yeah, okay. and so that's why I thought when you originally said valid. So book and uh, book, isn't it? I think that there's a yeah, definitely something with valid points for the other stuff. Also, I like international students, but I do have to say that. Um, 
I feel like that should be rolled into like the next three year plan because it's a large undertaking. It is a large one. And they just got back a identity based group. So like, well, only a portion of them will be the African um, international students that are a part of that. Um, so I feel like we we need to start engaging with them more to try to get them encouraged to collectivizing a little bit more so that we can hear from their community better before we can really do that, which is a great way to start working in a three year plan for them. So I think that's something we could we could do like for a full three years. So I was I would think we would not do it enough service to add it to the end of this. Um, so a three year plan restarts every single every single year. Yeah. Just so you know. Huh. Yeah. Um, for me, I'm gonna be maybe biased because the alumni relation, that's something <laughs> I I run on. And because why I say that it's important is because when you when you go to anybody who we'll go to college or go to university, they will be like, Oh, I'm a I'm 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 happy, I'm a I'm a I'm a badger, you know, like I, it doesn't matter if they they even not graduate over there. They just maybe go to two classes over there. They identify. It was like someone who's from Harvard. Like they they have this sense of pride. And if we have the alumni relation, it's gonna help us a lot because we maybe get fun from it because it's like they have a lot of people in Madison who at least maybe take one course in Madison College. That's mean they're alumni. I don't remember the last like before I attend Madison College, I already have the student ID from 2018. That's it's like, and I was in like in a class like, but I was just doing the ESOL class. All those people are considered like alumni because <laughs> you have the the student ID or something. I feel like the alumni relation gonna open a lot of doors, it'll open a lot of opportunity. That's Sorry to cut everyone. So thank you for that comment. First of all, sorry to cut everyone off. We are at time. This is just to get general ideas. Please do email me unless you wanted to say something now. Uh, I wanted to make a motion to extend the time. Seconded. Oh, <laughs> we did uh, say, extend for how many minutes? Huh? For 10 minutes. 10, Ten minutes? Okay. I was just going to say uh, alumni relations as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, and thank you for everybody. Um, Wait, uh, I second you it. have to vote it on. Yeah. Uh, um, is Robert's rule going to be still extended? Oh, we can suspend that too. Yeah. You want to add yeah. that to the motion? Oh, that's up to the motion. What <laughs> you're doing, you're extending the suspension of. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah I would be. Because we're extending the time. Because extending the time on this issue. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you still need a vote on it, though. I mean, yeah. So Everybody was in favor of the motion again. Right, people can still leave, right? Yeah, people can still leave if they want yeah. to. Yeah. yeah. We are at 6.30. We've discussed this the last time. We went over the time. Well, thank you. Okay, that's so the okay. third direction. Yeah. So six, six, three. Okay. Okay. So pretty much what I wanted to say about international students, I definitely think we need to look at this matter closer. I think we need to do some surveying um, to figure out what their needs are. I was in the international office a few times and I've heard students coming in there uh, trying to figure out like how their dental stuff works, how their um, uh, basically health care kind of needs stuff works. I found that, you know, even though I wasn't trying to eavesdrop, I was eavesdropping. I'm like, wow, this sounds a bit more complex. Um, and I mean, if you're not getting your basic needs met of healthcare and dental because you are an international student, I just need to, I want to make sure that that's happening, anything mm -hmm. like that. And to find out if they have any other issues. Um, alumni relations, um, I was just, you know, I was just uh, talking, I think with Max recently about how I think that um, the clubs, or at least um, a future club that um, may get started, need to look at alumni relations because they are potential donors. Mm -hmm. They are potential speakers for groups. There's um, a lot of advantages, which is why a lot of organizations have alumni relations. Um, and then the only other thing that crossed my mind was just kind of, I'm really curious about um, the survey information. I really think we need to take a look at that data when it comes in so that we can evaluate that um, ourselves 
and maybe revamp our plan again. So I don't know. I feel like that's going to be some valuable information for us to better help our students. And I guess I had one more thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, we need to figure out how to engage our STEM students more. We do have uh, like week by week stuff that goes out because there's um, a group, there's a club for it. So um, I would meet with them. Uh, what is them? Yeah, there's a, um, so I was talking to, I don't mean to interrupt you, I'm sorry, but I'm sorry for touching you without permission too. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I was talking with Laz, I can't think of his last name, I'm sorry. Oh, um, oh no. Mm. I have it. That's, 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 yeah, that's, that's Laz. But, okay, yeah. so I was talking with Laz um, about engagement and letting them know that we had student center positions open. Mm -hmm. And student, he just keeps saying, and he said this to me last semester, too, towards the end of the semester, that if we connect with them, that they are willing to play with their students. Now, I don't want to say play with their students' classes, but try and engage their students more in the different programming opportunities. But because we're not reaching out to them, making sure that, you know, they don't have any need. I don't know how to say it. That'd be nice. But we just need to do more outreach to them. And there's some opportunities where they would participate. And Laz, being the person that's over the program, has a lot of say in, hey, you guys are going to this today because I'm your God for this program. <laughs> it's lack of a better way of saying it. So it's just an opportunity. And we've had... Um, uh, STEM high school students here in the past. I think the person who was in charge of legislative affairs or did a lot with legislative affairs last year that I met. And I oh, Elijah. Elijah. Elijah and Ella. Yeah. yeah. I it's feel like they've them. done incredible things. So we're missing a community that is very smart mm -hmm. um, and could potentially help us out and has more free time because they're not necessarily... <laughs> You know, working full time. Young. Yes, and that's literally what he <laughs> wants. To do. Like, you know, they're looking for leadership opportunities. Yeah, I just now be eighteen. I think Elijah's gonna be graduating school in one year. I was a little surprised by that. Elijah had over like ninety credits going into school. <laughs> so I can't go back to the. <laughs> I wonder if we could wrap this into our, you know, Goodman South and, and regional campus outreach and advocacy goal. Probably. I think this needs to be well, like we have specifically STEM, outlined. We have STEM at this campus as well yeah. as at Goodman South. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we could. I just think we need to have some conversations with Laz and his team and figure out how to make it make it a, a good deal for all. STEM is also a major focus right now in the indigenous community. Um, there's actually a new initiative that's being talked about in the Monotony Nation for trying to engage students to get into STEM. And uh, part of um, some of the like, things I had to put in people's ears from last year was uh, talking about uh, the, um, the loaning program for technology uh, because they can reach more disadvantaged communities and everything. Um, I happen to know that Kashina, the capital of uh, the Monotony Nation, um, that's our Wi-Fi boxes work out there. I put it out there last, not last summer, it was not before that. Um, so I think focusing on STEM engagement will also increase our engagement with a large variety of people because we're talking about uh, very structural parts of all societies. It's going to draw in many different types of people. Yeah, I just want to say that, uh, you know, people online too, feel free to talk now or feel free to email me about these issues. I just wanted to start a conversation and see where everyone was at relating to this because I will be needing to write up a three year plan pretty soon because our budget presentation, we haven't chosen the date yet. But I think after the SAB meeting, we're going to be starting to choose dates for our budget presentation. Is that correct, Sean? Or are we doing it this Friday? Tomorrow, you will have a date selected. We're going to have a date selected. I want to do it at the end of February, which means that. We need to start the conversation now because we're going to have to vote on these. I also wonder, T, if you and me and anyone else that wants to contribute to this, if we can knock this out, if not this semester, next semester, and make it into like a special committee. So I feel like yeah. the, the I don't know, we kind of we got this. Like, we got a lot of ideas. So I think we can do the top two. It looks like alumni relations and financial aid and book charges like, seem to be the top two. Yeah, so, and like, I honestly think that there's a way to get um, the alumni really brought back in with the, you know, 
showing them more about what we're trying to do to further improve and everything. Okay. Like I think it, I think on alumni relations, if we communicate properly with these things, um, they'll it'll just naturally improve. So thank you everyone. I will be we'll be talking about this again, not on next meeting because the next <laughs> meeting doesn't have that, but yeah, I think that this is something that we'll revisit at a later Senate meeting and we should be voting on it so we can finalize things in a career planning. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um any question? Okay. Uh, announcement. But you uh, want to finish and non-business housekeeping items. You yeah, non-business housekeeping. Oh, okay. Non-business yeah, yeah. housekeeping announcement. The next meeting. It's probable I'm not gonna stay for the entire meeting because I have. So I like change my schedule at work to fit to go to uh, the Washington DC. And when I left, the meeting is not done. Okay, I'm gonna take over. Okay. okay. <laughs> so everybody know. And our next meeting gonna be on Thursday, February 1st. It's gonna be embrace yourself. It's gonna be a long meeting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's so ominous that you say it like that. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be a long meeting. Because I made present, I'm sure. Um, it will it will not really be a meeting meeting. Uh, so when you leave, um, unless it work, unless if something happens at uh, and Dr. Brady, yeah, it's not gonna happen. Uh, what I'm trying to say is I will not and BP leader will not have to step in as chair because there will be no meeting in terms of our tools. This will be called for the sensitivity meeting. And so we will not be having an actual general assembly. So would this count as office hours? Because if it's a training, I mean, I guess that can be left up to the executive council to make that decision. Uh, but I can tell you in the past, I never did that. Um, but again, leaving it to you guys to make your decision on how you want to run your thing. But um, just be prepared that that is what is going to happen. So. Um, yeah, it will be a long meeting, but no. this was a long meeting, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sorry. Not sorry, actually. <laughs> I motion to close the meeting. I feel like second. Yeah. Any discussion? Everybody. <laughs> I said discussion. Yeah, no, I know. No, no, it's not discussion. <laughs> yeah. How are you stepping out of here? Everybody was in favor of adjourning the meeting, raise your hand. Yep. Yeah, ready. Right, right, right. Okay, that's that's pretty much everybody. Yeah. Uh, I moved to agenda minute at six forty. This time is the right time. I'm not looking. <laughs> <at it. laughs> don't, go, don't go away. Hey, I just came in. Uh, no, we're oh. not. We're done. Very sad. Very sad stuff. I'm just getting started. Where are you guys going? Okay, so I need um, to get for the food. I really want to do that. I'm so you have no. We don't worry around how much you make some